You're watching MMA Odds Breaker. Of course, that's Chris Hordecki. I've had him on here before. The Polish hammer. Why can't it just be the hammer? Why is it going to be the Polish hammer? I get you Polish, but, you know, what is it with American and Canadians? We've always got to identify who our, who our, our parental background is. It's kind of strange. It's just, that's, just how, that's just how we are, man. Just how we are. You're in, uh, you're in Chicago. You're not even in Canada right now. You're not in London, Ontario. You are down there in, uh, in Chicago at Jeff Curran's place. How long have you been down there? Uh, I've been down here for about a month now. I, um, we kind of been mixing it up. Um, they've been mixing up my training, you know, ever since Sean passed, I've kind of been having to jump around a little bit. I've been doing uh, training camps at TriStar Gym mm -hmm. and, uh, kind of worked out where Chad LaFries, my teammate, he was the, uh, all the tough nations, Canada, Australia, uh, finalist. He's been going with me to TriStar too. He ended up actually fighting one of our teammates from there. So, uh, he opted, you know, not to go there. I didn't want to go there for conflict. So we ended up coming here during his camp and... I ended up actually fighting one of the guys that I'm going to be fighting one of the guys that Pat's fought. So um, just kind of worked out really well. Got, out, got some good work down here. So I just uh, decided to stay. So I've been here for, for about a month now and just finished it on my uh, last hard week. All right. Uh, Chris is talking about Marlon Sandro. That's his next opponent coming up here. And, of course, he fought Jeff as well. And, and it's on Bellator May 9th um, down in Ontario, Canada. So it's actually you get to go home. And, uh, and have a fight, you know, which was, uh, Ontario was one of the last holdouts um, for mixed martial arts. Now it's New York State, seems to be the last, is the last holdout that we're trying to get everything approved in. Uh, how big is it for you to be fighting back at home again and actually be on a big, a big format with big TV, with big coverage in your, in your basically back in your home, your home on, uh, province? It's nice, man. Um, I've been fighting in my home province as of late. You know, my last fight was in my hometown, which was pretty cool. I got to be the main event in my home city. You know, it was sold out the, the arena. Everyone was there, friends, family. It was pretty cool. Uh, before that, I was fighting in Alberta. So I've been doing the Canadian circuit for my last three, four fights. Yeah. Three, four fights. And uh, then previous to that, I was on Bellator. So it's good now. I'm back where I fought. Uh, I fought three fights, Casino Rama. It's uh, right about an hour away from Toronto, it's it's oh, it's good, wow. man. It's home home crowd, home home field advantage, and uh, it's exciting. I, like you said, it's on the main stage, uh, big show, Bellator. You know, the number two organization in the world. You know, closely behind the UFC, so it, it's it's right where I should be. And and main card televised fight on Spike TV. Will the hometown advantage help you against Marlon Sandro, or are you two guys two two tough professionals where really the crowd's not going to make a difference? You know what? It's it, it helps. It it definitely motivates you. It motivates me in training. But uh, we're both professionals. It's not our first day. This isn't our first first rodeo. We know what we're doing. What do you think's gonna? What do you think Marlon's gonna try to do differently to you than he has in guys in the past? Because you pose a, an interesting problem where you you have super high quality Muay Thai style striking, but you have an amazing style of boxing as well. So he's got to worry about your kicks, your knees, but also worry about your hands. Plus, you hit like a truck, and he's not. 22 anymore he's getting a little bit older and so he gets touched he tends to get a little loopy quicker yeah it's uh you know it's a big difference you know our age we're we got very similar experience but i got about 10 years of, of youth on him um but i'm not looking that lightly you know what i mean he, he even though he's he's nearing the end of his career you know what i mean he, he's going to be swinging for the fences he doesn't want to go out you know with a loss that's why i'm preparing so hard and doing everything uh to prepare myself for this um i i respect him a lot the camp he comes from you know, they, they got Jose Aldo, Henry Burrell, so, so it's all tough guys. So I, I, I'm, I'm prepared for anything he can throw at me. Stand-up, groundwork, you know, uh, I've put that work in and, and, and I'm there mentally and physically. You know, the biggest thing that stands out for me with his record of his 24 wins, seven KOs, only six submissions, and 11 of those and 11 go to decision. You would think coming from a camp like Novin Yao, he's going to have a better finishing rate uh, than he does in, in reality, but he seems to have a lot of decisions. So you know he's always got good heart good cardio to go through to the, to the final rounds. Did that play into how you were training for this, for this fight as well? Um, you know, I'm, being in shape has never been an issue for me. Um, and I, I know i got to be in sick shape for this fight, and that's what I am. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to push that pace three rounds. You know what I mean? Ideally, you know, you get in there, you put them out in the first minute. But, you know, it's MMA these days, 2014. We know it's not like that. And you got to be ready to, to grind it out till, till the 15th minute. That's Chris Hordak again, ready to fight Marlon Sandro coming up here on May 9th in, uh, in uh, Rama, Ontario, Canada, at the Casino Rama. Um, it, it's it's an interesting fact to see how that your whole team kind of how Team Tompkins kind of had to separate itself after Sean passed, and how each of you have kind of developed on your own. Because really, without that that core group for a while, everyone tried to stay together, but now you've had to really transfer and, and, and switch around. 
after this fight's over, are you going to go back to TriStar and train again? Just I know you weren't there now because of conflict and because Curran actually had, a, had the, uh, the common opponent in Sandro. Or are you going to make a new home at Jeff Curran's place? I'm going to mix it up with, with both. You know, Jeff, Jeff uh, you know, he announced that he's finally um, stepping away from the sport as a, as a fighter and um, taking that coaching role. So I'm going to be mixing it up. I, I, I owe a lot to Faraz Sahabi and uh, TriStar Gym, and, and they've helped me immensely, taking me, you know, um, to, when I was down and out, when I needed somebody there, you know, they picked me up. Uh, Chicago was kind of cool because I got family here and, and they live about 30 minutes from the gym. So it's kind of a nice balance and, and getting getting that different looks, you know what I mean? Getting getting the boxing training we got here in Chicago, going down to the city, you know, all the all the great jiu-jitsu guys, the super strong jiu-jitsu school that's here, um, you know, and mixing up at TriStar Gym, everybody there in Canada, you know, one of the top schools in Canada. Everybody kind of goes there for, for the sparring, working with uh, John Chamber for conditioning, uh, Crew Ash, who you got to see on Tough Nations for the stand-up, so it's, it's, and for as a hobby, so it's a good mix of, of everything. So what do you think is going to happen now with TriStar? Have you been back there since GSP uh, it retired or stepped back for a minute or whatever you decided to do? Have you been over there since then? Uh, last time I was there <laughs> was in February when uh, I went with my teammate Malcolm Gordon, uh, 125-er, and we spent a couple weeks up there before his fight. Has the has the attitude and the and the, and the feeling changed up there at all? Are they, as it Stepping away or whatever, I don't know exactly when that was. Do you think do you think the attitude has changed up there since the the top end guy is gone? Because there's always that question if the the, the the crown jewel of the gym takes off, like if John Jones leaves, you know, leaves a uh, uh, Winkle John Jackson, what's going to happen? You know, so what has happened over at TriStar? Do you have a feeling or a sense of what's going on over there? Is it is it everything keeps going the same way it's been going, or, or has things changed a little bit? Um, I'm sure you know, like. Yeah, GSP, uh, you know, he was, uh, you know, basically like a figurehead there. And, and, and he, you know, he did he did train there. But there was a lot of uh, other guys, Francis Carmont, um, you know, Ivan Menjivar, John McDessie. You know, there's a lot of UFC guys there, uh, Bellator guys, uh, Rick Hahn. You know, so they got, they got talent all over there. It's not just GSP, you know, and Faraz, you know, runs a pretty, uh, you know, pretty tight-knit show. So it's, I'm sure it's going to keep going just like it was. Who's uh, who? Are your main training partners down there at Jeff's place to to get you ready for this? Or was Jeff your actual main training partner? Well, Jeff's you know a training partner for me and, and a coach. I'm working with Pat, which uh, you know he's the you know the Bellator featherweight champion. So you, you can't get uh, you know m much better than that. Uh, like I said, we've been going down to Chicago, down to Sam Colonna's gym, sparring with uh, you know some pro boxers down there, oh. uh, and I got some up and comers here: Corey Galloway, Joey Deal. Uh, just some of the up and comers that are hungry and, and uh, they they want to make a name for myself. So every day they're they're coming at me, you know, guns blazing. Well, that's good, Chris. I appreciate coming on here, Emily Osbeck. I appreciate. It. I'm glad you're in Chicago. I'm, I'm glad it's kind of worked out for you to be down there because I think the, the current gym is one of the better gyms that people just don't understand. They just don't recognize. If you're a lightweight guy, you're a smaller guy. You need to spend some time up there if you can because it's an incredible gym and, and they they don't have any egos, which is nice when you go into a new gym is not having that guy that they're going to try to hurt you the first couple of days to prove a point. They're there to teach and, and expand, their, expand their knowledge as much as is share their knowledge with you. So I'm glad you're over there. I'm glad things are going well for you. Good luck uh, coming up in this next fight. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. Appreciate it, Frank. Thanks for having me, brother.